There are four armed service branches within the United States Department of Defense. They are, in order of decreasing size, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps, which is a component of the Navy. Although the Coast Guard is a branch of the U.S. Armed Forces, it is not part of the Department of Defense. All these branches share the same system of pay grades and ranks. The naming of the ranks, however, differs from branch to branch. More on this later. The ranking system that is used by the United States and most militaries puts soldiers into two main tracks. The first is the enlisted ranks. The second is the commissioned officer ranks. Enlisted men are the soldiers that form the bulk of the military and fill its ranks. They are the ones you typically think of when you hear the word soldier. In the U.S. Army, the eligibility requirements for an individual to become an enlisted soldier are that he or she be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, at least 17 years old, possess a high school diploma, pass a physical medical exam, and score a minimum of 31 on the AFQT. And once one meets these, he can sign up to become an Army soldier with the lowest rank and pay grade of Private E1. Now is a good time to explain the difference between rank and pay grade. There are 13 enlisted ranks ranging from the lowest rank of Private to the highest rank of Sergeant major of the army and nine pay grades from E1 to E9. Rank and pay grade are not the same thing but they are often used interchangeably because they serve a similar function. The difference is that certain pay grades contain multiple ranks which have different responsibilities and may outrank one another. For example the pay grade E4 contains the ranks of specialist and corporal. A corporal strictly speaking outranks a specialist because he is the junior most non-commissioned officer and CO and therefore performs duties similar to those of the sergeant while the specialist is the highest of the junior enlisted ranks and therefore performs tasks similar to those of the ranks below him. While both ranks contained in the E4 pay grade can be promoted directly to that of E5, the corporal laterally outranks the specialist even though their pay is equal and even though a specialist can be promoted directly to sergeant and thereby outrank the corporal. While two ranks can be contained in the same pay grade with one rank outranking the other, a higher pay grade always outranks a lower one. The highest rank that an enlisted soldier can achieve is the E9 rank of sergeant major of the army. The US Army has only one sergeant major of the army at any one time and he is its highest ranking enlisted member. Those who achieve this rank have typically served around 30 years in the army to be promoted up the ranks of the army. Besides doing one's job right, one must meet two main time requirements. The first of these is called time in service, TIS for short, and it refers to the total amount of time a soldier has spent in the army. The second is called time in grade, TIG for short, and it refers to the total amount of time a soldier has spent in his pay grade. To be eligible for promotion, a soldier must meet these two requirements, which usually increase as one advances up the ranks. For example, for an E2 private second class to be promoted to an E3 private first class, Class, he must spend a total of 12 months in the Army time in service and 4 months as a private second class time in grade. For an E3 private first class to be promoted to either of the E4 ranks, he must spend a total of 24 months in the Army TIS and 6 of those months as a private first class TIG. The list shows the time in service and time in grade requirements for the enlisted ranks. Commissioned officers are different. An officer is someone who was commissioned by his government to command enlisted men. Historically, armies were usually comprised of over 90% enlisted men and less than 10% commissioned officers. Although in in modern times, the percentage of officers has greatly risen to nearly 20% of the total. To become a commissioned officer in the army, on top of the requirements of enlisted soldiers, the basic requirement that one must meet is possessing a bachelor's degree from an accredited university. There are three main ways one can be commissioned as a U.S. Army officer. First, one can attend the military academy at West Point, earning a bachelor's degree there and getting a commission. Second, one can graduate from an ROTC program at Hesse University and gain a commission. Third, one can go to officer candidate school, OCS, after obtaining a bachelor's degree as a prerequisite to enter OCS. Completing any one of these three routes will end in the same result, a commission to become an officer in the army, namely a second lieutenant, which brings us to officer ranks. A commissioned officer outranks all enlisted ranks, period. That means that the lowest officer rank of O1 second lieutenant who just entered the army technically outranks the senior most enlisted E9 sergeant major of the army who has spent around 30 years as a soldier. As in the enlisted ranks, the first two officer promotions are given automatically to virtually everyone once they have met the time requirements in rank to be promoted. An O1 second lieutenant will be promoted to an O2 first lieutenant after serving for 18 months time in grade, and an O2 first lieutenant will be promoted to O3 captain after serving 24 months time in grade as first lieutenant. After this, promotions become competitive with the top 80% of captains that have met the time in grade and time in service requirements being promoted to the O4 rank of major. It typically takes longer to be promoted above the rank of captain because promotions are no longer automatic but competitive, and because militaries like pyramid structures, the percentage of people getting promoted decreases as the rank gets higher. For example, 80% of qualified captains are promoted to majors, 70% of majors are promoted to lieutenant colonels, and 50% of lieutenant colonels are promoted to colonels. To be promoted above the rank of captain, the time in grade requirement is 3 years. The ranks above captain have a time in service requirement as well, but their TIS requirements are allowed to vary by a year or two depending on what positions the army needs to fill. 
For example, the minimum time in service requirement for a captain to be promoted to major is usually 10 years of service, but it may be 9 or 11 years depending on the army's needs. And now the generals. Unlike the ranks below 07 Brigadier General, the general ranks of 07 to 010 collectively known as the Flag Officer ranks require a presidential nomination and congressional approval to be promoted to. Furthermore, they are extremely limited in number, constituting less than 1% of all career officers. One is usually only promoted to the rank of a flag officer once a flag officer retires or is promoted. Their total number is set by congressional statute, which in recent years limited the number of flag officers to a total of 962 for the entire military. Of these, 316 were allotted for the Army, 223 for the Navy, 271 for the Air Force, and 82 for the Marine Corps. Although the total number of flag officers allotted by Congress varies from year to year, the number is relatively steady. In 2010, for example, there were 150 brigadier generals, 99 major generals, 43 lieutenant generals, and 9 generals in the Army for a total of 301 flag officers. Lastly, there is a rank between enlisted men and commissioned officers. These are the warrant officers. They are officers by warrant instead of by commission. Warrant officers are single-track specialty officers with technical expertise in a particular field. An army aviator, such as a helicopter pilot, for example, would be a warrant officer, as would certain technicians. Warrant officers outrank all enlisted men, but are outranked by all commissioned officers. To become a warrant officer, one must first enlist in the army, earn the rank of E6 staff sergeant, and then apply to and go through warrant officer school. Upon completing warrant officer school, one will be commissioned as a W1 warrant officer. All branches of the armed services employ warrant officers except the Air Force. However, the requirements to become a warrant officer slightly differ across the service branches. One last thing. You may have heard of ranks such as Lance Corporal, Chief Petty Officer, or gunnery sergeant before, but they don't show up in the Army rank structure. Well, these are not Army ranks, they are Marine Corps and Navy ranks that have an Army equivalent pay grade and rank but have a different name based on what their service branch calls them. For example, an Army Private First Class is a rank with the E3 pay grade and its equivalents are the Marine Corps' Lance Corporal, the Navy's and Coast Guard's Seaman, and the Air Force's Airmen First Class. Despite the differences in naming, all of these ranks are equivalent and hold the same military pay grade E3. The same goes for officer ranks. For example, a Navy 06 captain is equivalent to the Army's 06 colonel. The Army's 010 general is equivalent to the Navy's 010 admiral. P.S. There is a fourth way one may enter the military as a commissioned officer, which is called direct commission. This, however, is reserved for people with professional degrees, such as lawyers or doctors, who are elevated to the O3 rank of captain or higher when they enter the army to serve in their professional field.